So step number one is compassion and reality. First thing to recognize is, my goodness, this is some serious pain. Both of these people have had horrific childhoods and are still stuck in tremendous unhealed pain from the past. Well, that's not something to laugh at and poke fun of. We all, all of us, are struggling with pain. And if you don't think you are, then you're in more denial than they are. And that's the first step. Remember, this is about getting into truth and honesty. And so if you don't see a level of yourself in them, then my heart breaks for you because you're so detached from reality. We are all imperfect. We all make mistakes. We all do some really despicable things at time. And thank goodness your perfect imperfections aren't being broadcast to the world. All right, so have some compassion that the frailties and the difficulties of being human are being displayed every minute of the day for these two people. Could you imagine what it's like to be them at night, laying in bed, knowing all these things came out? Like how hard would that be? So have some compassion for what they're going to. Also, do you recognize now what I, uh, this is the reality piece. I say this all the time, the most successful are the most broken. This is typical for the highly successful person. This isn't just because they're actors and they're famous. These are the business people. Business people just aren't in entertainment. So we don't hear these stories, but go sit in a courtroom someday and watch these high profile, you know, wealthy, successful people. These are their trials too. This is everybody. None of us escape childhood trauma. None of us escape pain. None of us escape perfect imperfections. We all live this in some form or another. Again, aren't we lucky that it's not being displayed for the whole world to see? And the third part of the compassion, is rea of a compassion and reality piece is the Adverse Childhood Experience Study. And I'm going to leave you a link for this. But now get into truth. Get into reality. Take responsibility. Google Adverse Childhood Experience Study. It'll come up on the CDC government website. This is the most thorough and most replicated uh, study that's ever been done. It's over 20 years old. And this showed 20 over 20 years ago that nearly 70% of the population has been through severe childhood trauma. All right? What they call adverse childhood experiences. All right? And you're just seeing it. This is the consequence. We've all had at least one experience, 70%, well, 67%. And this study has been replicated worldwide. It's not an American problem. It's not European. It is worldwide, okay? If you've experienced one adverse childhood experience, 88% of you have experienced two or more. Well, if you've experienced even one, just one, your chances for cancer, diabetes, heart disease, depression, addiction, like skyrocket, some from 400 to 1,000 percent. Like all of the, it's what I say. This is why I get frustrated with the medical community. We have studies like this that show directly your childhood trauma is the single greatest indicator of your future health problems. If you're not dealing with your childhood trauma as part of your health plan, you're not dealing with your health you're ignoring the primary cause of your health conditions. If you're not dealing with your childhood trauma and you're divorced one, two, three times or constantly dating narcissists or whatever, you're not dealing with the source of the problem. If you're broke or struggling with careers, always have bosses who are jerks and you're not dealing with your childhood trauma, you're not dealing with the source of the problem. Every single struggle you have in life originates in your childhood. There is no argument about that, and that's what I mean. Get into reality. We all, man, I would love, I would love for it to be something besides childhood because we all instantly feel like we're attacking our parents or we're blaming our parents or we as parents, oh my God, now I don't want to hear that, Kenny. That means I'm a terrible parent. Well, no, it doesn't mean you're a terrible parent. It doesn't mean your parents were terrible. Although, there are some that are like that. It means we're human. 
and we're perfectly imperfect. And because we don't talk, we've never talked about this stuff. We've never taught it. How could any of us be expected not to leave wounds? It's just not reasonable. And that's the detachment from reality and the detachment from truth. Like, we have to start accepting that because we've never been taught how to be a parent, we've never talked about these things, we've never brought it out into the open, truth is we would have to make mistakes that would leave wounds. There's no other possible outcome. And so we have to start taking ownership and responsibility. And that's the point of everything I do. It's not to blame parents because everything boils down to childhood. Your life boils down to your childhood, all right? And as I say all the time, everyone feels originally like I'm, I'm blaming the victim or I'm blaming parents. And that's, that's the defense mechanism. That's stage three and four of the worst day cycle, the shame and denial piece. That's why we do that. We don't want to take ownership, and so we project back. But do you see, I'm not blaming. What I'm doing is I'm advocating we get truthful and responsible. Well, isn't that what adults are supposed to do? Be responsible. And isn't that the, the main job of a parent is to model responsibility so our kids learn. We don't tell our kids, go be responsible, as we spend all day at the bar. Right? I think we'd all agree that's not responsible parenting, right? Well, that's all I'm advocating. Go learn about the adverse childhood experiences. Go learn about parenting. That's being a responsible parent. If you haven't done that, then you've been irresponsible. That's just truth. Okay? That's not blame. That's just, ah, oh, there's a lot to learn in life. My gosh. Like, and, and think of how long it takes us to learn something. I'll, I'll say this to my clients. I guess I'll use it with you. How long do you think it would take you to write a one-page essay on, and I'm going to give you two options, a one-page essay on a topic that you think you know a lot about, and a one-page essay on a topic you know nothing about? Well, I always do this exercise with my clients, and usually the estimates are if they know the topic, it probably would be about 30 minutes you know, if they know the topic really well, somewhere between 30 minutes and a couple hours. And if they don't know the topic, then it, it usually ranges between a couple hours and like a day or two, okay? And I have to tell them all, no, that's a lie. You're not even close. <laughs> like nowhere even in the ballpark. Do you realize that for us to write a one-page essay, it takes all of us, all of us, every single one of us, nearly 10 years. Think about it. Kindergarten, what did we learn to do? We learned to start writing the letters, right? We had to learn the shapes. And then we had to memorize them. And then we had to learn how to group them and put them together in different words. And then we had to memorize how to spell those different words. Then we had to learn how to put them together so that they made sense. That's a sentence. Then we had to learn grammar and punctuation. Then we needed to learn how to set up a paragraph and theme and all of this stuff. By the time we're a senior in high school, we can write a fairly decent one-page essay. Ten years later, learning takes time. Get into reality. Have compassion for yourself. Your parents were perfectly imperfect. You are perfectly imperfect as a parent. None of us are bad. None of us are to blame. We just are responsible. Go learn. Take ownership of your perfect imperfections. Put a plan in place to stop denying the truth that we've all been hurt and we all hurt our children. And that's okay. Take ownership. Put a plan in place to start learning and growing. Be responsible. That's number one. Number two, now we're really going to get into the, well, that was pretty meaty, but this will be even meatier um, or have more meat to how this uh, trial can really turn your life around. And number two is watch how the worst day cycle is operating in your own life. And here's how you're going to do it. The first thing I encourage you to do or invite you to do is see how each of them is repeating the exact same childhood trauma they experienced against themselves with their relationship choices. So who did they marry? Because like I, I haven't, I haven't. I'll be 
perfectly honest with you, I haven't watched a lot of this trial. People asked me to, and I sat down to watch for about an hour, and I went, honestly, there's so much dysfunction here. It would To do a kind, loving critique without throwing people under the bus, would t I'd have to give up everything I do. I, I mean, I put out a ton of free content. I make myself available, obviously, to my clients and the ways I do make money to pay for all this. But I'd have to give up all that and just for eight hours a day watch the trial so I could do an honest assessment. Well, I wasn't, I made the decision, I'm not gonna do that. And so that people have been like, are you gonna talk about it? And, and I finally realized this is the way to talk about it. But I, I have heard a little bit of Johnny Depp's um, childhood. Absolutely devastating. Like, ooh, talk about compassion. Now, who did he pick? Did he pick his mother or his father? Think about his childhood history. Who did he relive his worst day? See, remember, our adult relationships are a mirror of our childhood relationships. Because of the worst day cycle, we're all stuck in it. We all go through the four stages, trauma, fear, shame, and denial. And because no one's taught us about this and we don't know it, we then live our adult life reliving the trauma, fear, shame, and denial against ourselves. We literally pick the pain that we haven't healed. And we're doing it to teach ourselves, hey, you need to go back and heal this. Hey, these, these are your traumas. It doesn't matter, the other person, well, I'm not excusing their behavior, you pick them. Like I could put you in a room, literally, if you haven't healed your worst day cycle, I could put you in a room with any number, 1,000, 10,000, 20,000 people, you know, of the opposite sex or whatever sex you like. All of them would be what you say is your dream. And I'd put one in there that's just like your childhood and like radar, you'd come out and you'd say the same thing about, oh, they're rich and they're nice and they're strong and they're sexy and they're smart, but there's something about this one. And you know why that is? That's the worst day cycle. Our, this is the fear piece. Our brain and body becomes emotionally, chemically addicted to relive the trauma we haven't healed. And that's why you're drawn to all these toxic narcissists and careers and you're reliving the trauma of your childhood, just like them. So use this. It can be difficult to see ourselves. And so you may not be quite ready to do your own healing journey and get into truth and reality and take responsibility for how you, I, I know this is hard to believe, but that narcissist you wanna blame, like I'm, I'm not denying that they were hurtful, but you picked them because of your own childhood trauma. And if you don't think you went through childhood trauma or it has nothing to do with it, that's why you're stuck. Because you don't, you're not in truth, you're not in reality, and you're not taking responsibility. And so you're just gonna keep picking narcissists until you do it. And that's why, that's part of the cycle. We keep picking it as, as a internal subconscious message screaming back at ourselves. Would you show yourself some compassion? Would you go heal this? Because that's, this is the piece I forgot to mention about compassion. If you can't have compassion for these two people, the only reason you can't is because you can't have compassion for yourself. And so as you hear me talk about the cycle and you get defensive, you may not realize this, but your denial of these facts, that this is how it works, is you denying compassion for yourself because I'm showing you the way out. And if you choose not to take it, if you choose to stay stuck in the cycle, especially really what we're talking about is the shame and denial portions, and you're choosing, I know this is hard, man, it's even hard to say it to you, but you're choosing to re-victimize yourself and you don't know that. And you're doing it only not because you're to blame, but because no one's taught you how this works. And so you're just unaware. And so you're not to blame and you are responsible. You are responsible if you deny it, push it down, don't do the work and don't heal it. Or take responsibility, get into truth, have some compassion for yourself and go on the healing journey. So maybe you're, you're getting ready to be ready. You're not committed to doing the work. Well, this is perfect for you. Watch them. Watch how they're reliving the cycle. Watch how it mirrors their childhood. Now. Most likely, it's just like mom or dad. Which one did they pick? Also, here's the other piece. For some people who aren't 
aware of how the cycle works. It's not always direct. In other words, say we had a parent who slapped us, all right? It doesn't mean we're going to automatically pick a partner who slaps us. We might, but it can be metaphorical. How, you know, when they describe what they went through in childhood, is there a metaphor in, in how the other person is treating them? Like, do they even say on the stand, I felt slapped? Like they talked about physically it happening and then the prosecutor or defense says, were you slapped? No, 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 but that's how it felt. That's why they picked them. See, it's metaphorical. It may be verbal or you know some, something they did. So what you're looking for are the feeling words that they used to describe their childhood, how do they mirror the feeling words that they're describing about Amber or Johnny, okay? That's the metaphor. That's the replaying that they're stuck in, all right? The third part of using them to help you discover your own worst day cycle and learn how the worst day cycle works is who do you sympathize with the most? Which side are you taking? Which one do you think is worse than the other? Now ask yourself these questions. How does that mirror your own cycle? Because that's why you're picking them. Your brain and body is addicted to the exact same trauma. It's a trauma reaction. It's showing you. That's why you want to defend this one and think that one's bad because it mirrors how you were mistreated, right? And so that's the, like, it's further proof of how all this works, all right? You are drawn to defend and justify and deny your own unhealed pain. And that's so you're going to identify with one or the other the most so that you it's a protection mechanism over your own worst day cycle. And so they become a proxy that inadvertently we can hide behind so we don't have to deal with us. We go, yeah, ch we champion, you know, Johnny or Amber because they're us. But Johnny and Amber, you know, both are equally in their own unique ways, not taking responsibility. They're both playing the victim and blaming the other one. And legitimately, it seems from what I watched, they were both victimized in, in different ways. And so I'm not denying that, but neither is taking enough responsibility that, wait a minute, because I never healed my childhood, I picked you so you would treat me that way. I actually sought you out. And that's the tough, that's what you want to deny. And that's why you're uh, grabbing on to a certain person here. And you know they're the one you believe the most because you don't want to admit that side of it, okay? I know, I told you this is heavy stuff to get into. So again, go back to the beginning, have compassion. Don't get, if you get angry at me and want to say it's no, that's actually you projecting a lack of compassion for yourself onto me. That's how it works. And that's, we're going to move into step number three. Confront and heal your shame and denial. Whenever we judge, blame, hate, or criticize anyone or anything, the only reason we do that is because we are seeing a part of ourselves that one, we haven't healed, and two, we haven't forgiven ourselves. Now, this really trips people up, and, and like I have little 30-second videos that talk about this, and, and people, it, 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 un, just so you know, the 30-second videos I put out, they're teasers. The idea is to give you a little something to go, huh, that's interesting. I'm going to go watch the full video and get the full context, all right? You can't describe these complex processes in 30-second videos, and People will react as though in that 30 seconds I've described everything, and, and I'm not. And so many times that 30 seconds is out of context and on purpose. It's a teaser. It's to provoke thought. It's not, you know, I mean, some of them are, here's an answer, but most of the time it's, huh, what is that? I want to learn more. But because of the worst day cycle, we instantly go into judge, blame, criticize, deny. They're wrong. And so a lot, I get a lot of terror, you know, terrible comments. Well, I don't take them personal because I recognize they're caught in their worst day cycle. They, what they heard is they're either doing directly or indirectly and they can't see it. And so they're not aware of it. They haven't healed it and ultimately haven't forgiven themselves for it. And so they're boom. 
putting it right on me. Well, again, I don't blame them. I do internally hold them responsible because that's love. Holding people accountable and responsible for their choices and actions and choice not to watch the full video and get more educated on these topics, they're responsible. If they choose not to do that and they have a reaction, they're doing that to themselves. I didn't cause it. And so I do hold them responsible for that reaction. They have a choice. They can choose, do they wanna stay the victim or create, like in those situations, they're creating a victim identity. Well, they get to do that. Look, I've done it. It's very advantageous. I mean, that's the point of the shame and denial and why we re-victimize ourselves. Because if I'm the victim, do you see what a wonderful benefit? And everyone's, oh, there's no benefits. Oh my God, of course there are. When I'm the victim, I don't have to take responsibility for anything, especially in, in culture today. Um, we get to blame everybody. And that means I get to stay the child and I get to pull in the whole world and say, you need to be different and you need to fix this for me. So I'm the irresponsible child. Remember what I said, this video is, is about truth, honesty, and taking responsibility so we can become the greatest version of ourselves. Well, two critical factors, truth, responsibility. When we it is okay to recognize that we were victimized. And then immediately, it is our responsibility to look at and go, what part did I play? What am I unaware of? It's my responsibility to take ownership. Oh my God, I picked this person. So both Johnny and Amber have no one to blame. You know, if, whichever one is pointing the finger, you let that person next to you. So I, while I agree it's terrible that they you know, perform these things against you and I would never condone it. And my heart breaks and, and I think it's, it's really sad. I also know I have tremendous compassion for both because I know when they do those unspeakable things against each other, it's because they haven't healed the childhood trauma. And so they're, they're just children. They're both two, four, eight-year-olds in adult bodies. And when they are abusive to each other, it's children acting out. They've never healed it. And so I have compassion that they don't know that they're children. And I have compassion for you that it's the same. You picked this person and now you're trying to get the world to be responsible because your parents were perfectly imperfect. They weren't there. And so you created, you, you know, adopted two things. You became the wounded child and the adapted wounded child. And this became what grew out of it. You never, you know, became an adult. And so you got stuck in that place looking for the parent you never had. And so that's what you're doing. You're stuck in shame and denial projecting going, you need to be different and you're judging, blaming and criticizing because it allows you to stay the child and never be responsible. I can get you, the world, everyone and everything to be the parent I never had. Oh my God, what a great coping skill. Like, do you see how valuable that is? And that's why we all do it. It's tremendous power tremendous power to be the victim. And so that's why we choose these people because no one's taught us this is what we're doing. So we're not to blame. You can't be blamed for doing something you weren't even aware of. Like, think about that. And I hope you hear my compassion. You're not to blame. You're just doing the best you can. And the only way it gets different is if you you get into truth, and man, that's hard. Like, think of what I'm, I mean, I tell you what, putting these videos out is hard on me because I know how most people, because they're early in recovery, they feel like I'm assaulting them. That's devastating to me. I know I'm not. I know I'm, that's their trauma and their worst day cycle, and no one makes us feel anything. The science proves that. We take our own unhealed feelings from childhood and bring them in the, you know, but, but I'm compassionate. I don't want people to hurt. So I have to force myself to say these things because I know it's truth. And I have a responsibility to myself after be, spending my life as the professional victim, asking the world to be the mother and father. Like my parents were wonderful at times, especially my mother. My God, when my mother wasn't drunk, <clears throat> Uh, I have no words for how she adored me.
It's like textbook perfect. Like we, I watch old videos before my mom's drinking. And the utter joy in her eyes and expression of being a mother. Oh, pure bliss. And she was imperfect too. And she didn't want to be imperfect. I know she died with tremendous shame at how her drinking robbed her of being our mother. It devastated her. Your parents are devastated too. Sadly, most of them are hiding behind shame and denial. They put up the anger. They stay the victim. They don't want to talk about it. They don't want to deal with it. They don't want to have these discussions. And you probably don't either. You don't even want to admit it to yourself that you have done this to your child. But do you see, if you don't get into truth and honesty, if you don't take responsibility, do you see you're doing everything you say you don't want? That's victimizing your child because when there is deception, when there is denial, there is no truth. Relationship requires truth. And so if you're still watching and you haven't just shot bullets at me and are just hating me right now, maybe you're crying because you do feel the truth of it. Well, now's the time to reach out to your kids and go, I'm so sorry. I wish I'd have known, but I just watched a video and I see I made some mistakes and I don't even know how to fix it yet. But I want you to know we need to talk about this. From this point forward, you have my permission to talk about how you felt I was hurt. Now, I may not agree on everything, and I may not even remember most of the things you bring up, but that's okay. It's not about getting it perfect. It's about creating a relationship based on truth and responsibility. Are you open to that? Are you willing to change things and repair things. Cause I sure as heck am, man, I wish I could go back and redo it. And I can't, I did the best I could with where I was, but now I have new information and I'm going to take responsibility. And so from this moment forward, I'm going to do the best I can to be truthful with you and take responsibility as your parent. Are you open to that? Will you forget? Well, you don't even have to forgive me. That's the other thing. Don't ask for forgiveness from your kids. Don't place that responsibility on them. Let them decide that. What matters is you forgive yourself. And how do you forgive yourself? By taking responsibility, by getting into truth. And then on your judgment day, you can look yourself in the mirror and go, I wasn't perfect. But once I saw that video, once I heard about truth, I owned it. I put a plan in place and I did the best I could and that I can live and die with. I can forgive myself and lay that burden down. Now I can leave this earth knowing I did the best I could as a parent. That's the job of a parent. And that's a legacy you leave with them. That's the single greatest lesson you can teach your kids is how to take ownership of being imperfect because it brings truth in which allows for relationship. And that's all we want from our parents, right? I mean, think of Johnny and Amber. They just, they're both yearning for a connection with their parents. And they're using each other to take all that pain out on. Who are you using? Who did you use? Do you want to put an end to that? Would you like to get your life back? Stop doing that. These three ways are how. Here's a bunch more solutions to show you how. Go to my website, kennyweiss.net. Hit the menu button, go to the blog section. There are categories. Look for the denial and self-deception. The denial and self-deception really trips people up, but I have articles in there that walk you through the exact process so you can see, because most of the, I don't do that, I don't do that. Yes, you do. <laughs> you just haven't been shown the process. Well, that makes it easier for you to, to learn the process. And so you can learn to turn when you want to hate somebody and blame them. You can turn around and see your part in it, okay?
So go to my blog, self-deception, uh, deny, pardon me, denial and self-deception category. Also, many of you still aren't, you know, the worst day cycle that I've talked about is new to you or it's confusing. You don't know the inner workings. I also have a worst day cycle um, category. Go read those articles. Now, I've just redone my whole website. Only half of it is up. I redid all of this so I could provide you with tons of resources. So you, so you knew exactly where to go to get help. And there's a whole page coming about the worst day cycle. It's not up yet. So keep checking back um, because you, the worst day cycle is going to transform your life when you see how it's operating in everyone's life and nobody knows it. All right. And it'll transform your life. So at least for now, read the blog entries that I've done about it. Um, next, go to my YouTube channel, subscribe. Then look for my Worst Day Cycle playlist. I've done five videos. They're called, um, I think it's Reclaim Your Authentic Self by Becoming Trauma-Informed. You'll see they all have the same um, picture of me. And they say part one, part five. They all have the same titles. And I have them numbered part one through five. That will walk you through more in more depth about the four stages, the trauma, fear, shame, and denial portions of the cycle and how it all works. So you can begin learning how it's operating in your life. And so you watch those, then you watch the trial. And I'm telling you, you're going to have a completely different understanding. And you're going to talk about compassion and reality for what's really going on. It'll, you're going to see the world in a way you never thought possible. The life is going to become easy and make sense to you when you learn how the worst day cycle works. Okay. Also, I would encourage you and invite you same thing on my YouTube channel. Go to my self-deception and denial playlist. Watch those videos so you learn how I know this is really hard, people, the denial. I don't do that, Kenny. Well, you may not do directly what they do, but indirectly you do. And so you need to learn that process because when you, if you are in denial, you are stuck in the scales of injustice. High, high, when we are in this, we're high denial, low self-esteem. We have low self-esteem because we're not in truth. If I'm denying truth, I'm lying. I'm in deception. That means I cannot love myself. I cannot be in high self-esteem. And so when I'm here, I can't love you or me. And that's why we have to understand how denial works. Because do you see, when I admit the truth and take responsibility that I'm perfectly imperfect and I've made mistakes and there's a lot of darkness in me, just like Johnny and Amber, what happens? Because when I get in truth, I can see who I clearly am. And from that place, I can love and forgive myself. I can let in, wow, I didn't, I didn't know childhood trauma, that we've all suffered it. I didn't know about this worst day cycle. But now that I can see it, that it is true, and that I am responsible for it, and that I'm learning how to heal it, now I can, I can love myself because I'm forgiving myself because I'm dealing with it. Okay? The next thing is go watch two other videos where I talk about how this works in the public sphere. The Will, Sli Will Smith slap in the worst day cycle. Also, the Tinder swindler. Watch both of those videos. They break down how emotions are made, how the worst day cycle operates in these type of situations. Okay? We're almost there. Next, if you really want to get your life back, if you want to get forgiveness within yourself and heal the relationships with your kids, stop picking toxic people, achieve your potential and leave the legacy. I think we're all, I think we're all meant to leave a legacy of some sort. We're all definitely supposed to live a life of glory and, and profound impact on ourselves and others. To do that, in my opinion, you need to know how the worst day cycle works and you need to begin the taking the journey to heal it well I'll pick up my book your journey to success this is where i lay out the worst day cycle and you'll be able to see it's everybody and it's you if you can't see it just keep reading it that's the shame and denial portion and you'll learn why you deny it you'll learn why it happens okay and why for some people it can take them a while before they're ready to see that, yes, we are all stuck in this. And that's just 
a protection mechanism. It's not because you're bad. It's because you learned it is so scary to actually be you that it's so not okay to be your authentic self. You don't want to let that wall down and let your authentic self come out. And so that's why you get angry at me or say it's not true or, you know, all the different things. It's not about me. That voice is your pain. It's your parents. It's your victimizers. And so, look, I'm imperfect too. Sometimes I take it personal. <laughs> <laughs> you know, I, I take those words and put my father on it or my brother, you know, trauma from my childhood. But I always get centered and go, no, it's not that. This is just their stuff and it's okay. All right. Finally, if you want to see how all this works and heal it, not just learn about it, then, then you want to sign up for my uh, online masterclass, my complete emotional mastery method. I've developed a really profound process that heals trauma and, and reconnects us with our authentic self and gets us through this. And, and I want this available to everybody. And so it's only $47 a month to subscribe. You can cancel any time. You don't have to stay with it. Um, I know this, if you stay with it, you'll have the life you want. You will. You'll be able to achieve it. And Here's the other thing. This is the scariest part for people, and they don't think it's true or that it's possible. Most people are afraid to do this work because they think if I do, it means I'm going to alienate or lose my parents, or I'm saying I'm blaming my parents, and they don't want to do that. Well, I don't blame you. I don't want you to do that either, and I'm not asking you to do that, and this process doesn't teach you that. You may feel like that right now. That's because you're early in it and haven't seen. That's your false persona creating a false mechanism to keep you as the victim and the child. Now, you don't know that yet, but that's what's happening. And so you think it's right. It's no, Kenny, you're wrong. I'm not seeing it that way. Well, that's, you're just, put it this way. I, and every, God, every time I say this stuff, it really comes out like I'm demeaning you. And, and that's not my intent. It, it's just truth. If, if you are stuck fearful of that, you're the child in kindergarten learning how to write letters. That's where you are in the, you know, remember I used the analogy of um, writing a paper, a one-page essay. Early on in the process, that's what you are. You're just learning how to write the letters. And so it, it's hard for you to grasp everything I'm saying. That's okay. We all have to start somewhere. We all started by writing the letters. Every single one of us, we, net, we can't skip that step, all right? But if you want the way out of it, that's the way to do it, all right? Again, my goal in this video was not to disparage two, two perfectly imperfect people who are going through pure hell. And they're doing it in front of all of us. Whoa. And if you can't have compassion for what they're experiencing and what they have experienced, remember, that's a lack of compassion for you. Your anger and hatred and judgment and blame of them is about your own anger, judgment, blame, and hatred of yourself. It's not about them. Don't forget that. So the goal in all of this is to take ownership of your perfect imperfections, to get better at being honest and truthful with yourself. Take responsibility for your life. And my hope is you take this video, you watch it several times, you investigate all the solutions I've given you and you use it as a springboard to conquer your worst day cycle and become the greatest version of yourself. Have a great day. I hope that helps you.